Hi, I'm Joe, product manager for the Smart IQ system. IQ 3.0 is almost here. Let's go through what's new. After getting the update, you'll see this intro when you turn on your board. Most of the IQ 3.0 new features are centered around the new home screen, so this intro gives you uh, what you need to know to get rooted in that experience. So as you swipe through, the first part, the home button, instead of raising the old IQ pop-up launcher, it will take you to the full screen home experience. We've moved the file libraries out of the individual whiteboard and notebook player apps into a common files library built into the home screen so that you don't have to remember where your content was in order to find it. IQ 3.0 also features web apps and in the future it will feature uh, the ability for admins to sideload apps via remote management. Those will appear in the apps library. Customizing the home screen is as easy as tapping the star on a recent tile or on a tile inside the files or apps library to make it a favorite on the home screen. And you can change the wallpaper to anything you like inside settings. As soon as you complete the intro demo, it will take you to the home screen where you'll see it'll look like this. Uh, you'll have the whiteboard browser and player tiles appear pre-pinned as favorites. Screen share and input are located at the bottom of the screen alongside the files and apps libraries. Settings and cleanup remain roughly where they were in the old experience. Getting around inside the home screen, as you use applications on the board, uh, you'll find that uh, they will add entry tiles into the recent section of the home page. So if we come into whiteboard, you will see we'll have a whiteboard entry in recent. So making one of these a favorite is as easy as tapping it there. You might want to rearrange the tiles in the favorite section. To do that, press and hold to put the home screen in edit mode. Press and hold again to lift the tile up, drag it where you want it to live. And then to leave edit mode, just tap off the tiles. You can do similar things for recents. If, say, you pre-filled some whiteboard content that you don't want students to see yet, that you're going to open later, all you have to do is press and hold the recent tiles to put that in edit mode, and tap the X to close it. Same thing, tap off it to leave edit mode. To change the wallpaper, you'll find that in settings under the wallpaper section. We have quite a few pre-defined options. You can also bring your own with a USB thumb drive. Uh, if the image needs to be stretched in order to fill the screen, that will happen automatically. So if you have square images, expect the top and bottom to get clipped off. To change it, all you have to do is select the image you want and you're ready to go. Next feature I'm going to show you is the files library. We've taken all of the content that used to live separately in the whiteboard library, notebook player library, etc., and move them into a single files library so it's easy to find your content. So here I have some notebook files that I used to send to board to get to the board uh, from notebook on the desktop, and I've got the whiteboard content that I made in the whiteboard app just a minute ago. Everyone's wanted to be able to rename whiteboards for a really long time. Now we have the ability to do that. So you rename them, just put the screen in edit mode, tap a tile, tap the title, and then go. You can also delete things, uh, select them, and then hit the delete button. You'll have a short window of time to undo deletions that were accidental. You can also use the mobile device button in order to get a pairing code to use for share to board from notebook. Let's look at the apps library now. When you go in apps, you'll notice that all of the content that was pre-populated for the beta has been removed. Uh, we're down to just the stock apps that come with the board. To add apps, just tap the new tile, and as you search, we'll do a combination of a web search, and we'll also search our curated store. Uh, the store right now is empty. It will get content after the V3 release in the end of August. Uh, here I've got 
Sesame Street that I've gone ahead and added to apps. You'll see that I have it here now. If I tap the star on that, I've also just made it a favorite on my home screen. So back at the home screen, as you're working with uh, web pages in the browser, like here, I've been, uh, I've been watching some videos on YouTube. If I want to set that as a favorite, when I tap the star on the page, you'll notice that automatically the apps library will create an app for YouTube as well. So here, we can uh, pin that as a favorite. You can also edit things inside the apps library if you press and hold a tile. You have a little more control over the properties of an app. Here you can change both the title and the URL to a web app in case they aren't quite what you want after you've added it through search or from the home screen. You can also delete by just selecting and tapping delete. Any apps or files that you had pinned as favorites, after you delete them, you'll notice they're gone from the home screen. Next, you'll notice there are quite a few changes in the IQ 3.0 experience around screen share. First thing you'll notice is that there's support for two devices now. When I connect, I can take the screen immediately. When someone else connects in the background, you'll see a notification come up and you can return to the lobby and switch back and forth between the two devices or you can just sit in the lobby and see both devices live if you want. Another new feature on the AM40 IQ appliance, there's also support for streaming media now. So if you're running inside an app like YouTube, where it would result in streaming content being sent to the screen, you'll see that it works now. And as you go back to the lobby, the streaming content will pause Inside settings, there's a new feature called require permission for screen share. If we turn that on, we'll actually receive prompts before we show people's devices on the screen. So here, I can see that Nat's iPhone wants to share. Uh, I'll go ahead and let her share her screen, and away we go. So this is uh, better than pins because in a normal setup, if you have a pin, once you've connected once, you're good forever. Here, anytime someone connects, you'll be prompted to accept.